Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing Webflow. Today we're going to be talking about a feature that I've asked actually Webflow directly and they are considering bringing this, this feature in. I think it could be super powerful and something we use quite a lot and that is triggering interactions with JavaScript. So in a nutshell, you define your interaction, uh, maybe it's on a click, maybe it's on a hover or whatever it is, but through JavaScript and through other interactions or maybe after an Ajax call or something, you could then play that animation or pause it or seek it. And I think this could be really, really powerful. It's something that Pinegrow does and I wanna be demonstrating what I essentially mean through Pinegrow. And of course, if you are using Pinegrow, then this of course serves as a bit of a tutorial on how you can define the interactions with the interactions panel and then, then later down the line trigger them with JavaScript. So if you're excited for that one, then smash the like button and give us a subscribe if you wanna hear more about no-code tools like Webflow. And with that, Let's get on with the tutorial. Oh, and this is my merch t-shirt. So if you are interested in picking up one of these, then head on over to flowstate.dev slash store and uh, you can pick yourself up a t-shirt. So here is what we have is pretty basic. When you hit the menu button, a menu pops up, click the menu button, it disappears. Very straightforward. But what I want to do is when you hit the escape button, which is what pop-up menu should actually do from an accessibility perspective, when you hit escape, it will close and we'll do that through JavaScript because I think you can do it uh, through Pinegrow um, keyboard interactions, but it just seems like a perfect use case just to close that menu using JavaScript only. I've built already built the button here and I've already built the, the menu. What we're gonna focus on is the interaction side, uh, getting this working as you saw in the demo, and then we're gonna do the rest with pure JavaScript alone. This is not gonna be an in-depth thing on Pinegrow interaction specifically. There's probably a bunch of stuff I'm gonna miss out, uh, crucial things I'm gonna miss out, but let's just get it working and see how we get on. So if I click on this menu button, what we're gonna to wanna to do is add interactions. If you haven't already added interactions into your page, then it will ask you to add the JavaScript library. Now, the menu that I've got here is a component that I'm using on the other pages. So when I update this component, it will update across all of the pages. That's why we're seeing a boring kind of uh, screen here. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're add an interaction. We're gonna name this interaction open menu, okay? I don't know why I'll do that. Default was a click, so we can leave that, or we can just trigger it there, but let's leave that as a default. Cleans the code up a little bit. It's probably worth noting at this point that you can actually define animations with no events applied to them. And this is great if there is no reason other than JavaScript that you wanna trigger an animation. You want complete control through JavaScript. And the target is gonna be the element that we want to target. Now, there are ways using a kind of like um, a jQuery like selector where you can target any element on the page anyway, but what this does is sets the scope of this, which only makes sense when you're in, inside of uh, Pinegrow interactions, this becomes whatever we set this to now. So I wanna select that on the page and I'll come here and I'm actually gonna select my menu, which I've given an ID of menu. Now I'm using Tailwind, so there's a bunch of other classes, so I'm just sort of separating the class um, for the styling and then I'll use the uh, ID as for the JavaScript. Now, we want to edit the animation and we come here so you can see it's already scoped to our, you can see the green box there, it's already scoped everything we're doing on this timeline to that menu box. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna tween and what we're simply gonna auto opacity to one, okay? That's what we're gonna do and Obviously vice versa, we're gonna add another interaction here called close menu. Um, and this is going to, again, select on page, target that menu, edit menu, add a new thingy thing, and property opacity, auto opacity zero. Now, again, this is not a tutorial on how to correctly build a menu. You're probably gonna to wanna to, um, stop pointer events and all the rest of it just so we can, um, just so it doesn't get in the way, even though it's the opacity's there, you might still be clicking it. I don't know, the point is this is not a tutorial on interaction specifically. So that should probably work. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is click on this and then hide that at the start. And we've got our menu here. Now we're gonna add it 
to, we, we've already got the menu button added to our pages, but what I know I haven't got on the pages here because it's not part of the component is that menu that we created. So I'll copy that and I'll paste it in here. Cool, to tidy it up. Update my components, save that, and let's preview it in the browser. If I inspect that, should, well, we can see something's going on here, and I know why. So something's going on, but what we wanna do, we only wanna trigger one interaction when it's open and the other interaction when it's closed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock back into here, click on my button, which has those clicks, and I'm going to say um, trigger condition attribute. So let's just do an attribute of open is equal to false. And then the close interaction open is equal to true. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do then is on the open menu, we're gonna set our property, custom property, um, to uh, you, this is how you affect HTML attributes on the element with that. We're gonna set the open to, um, well, we're gonna do open and then set that to true here. Sorry if I'm going a little bit too fast for you, but I'd suggest scrubbing up on Pango interactions if this none of this makes sense. But And then I'm gonna set the attribute of open to false. And then, and that, set. And that is on the menu backdrops. And then I'm gonna set a default attribute. Um, let's actually not do it here because it's not a component. Let's do it on the actual page itself. Let's set the open to false. So it's got a default of false. Let's update my components, whip here. And I'm watching this div here. There we go, close open, close, and you can see the open here is switching from true to false. And we've got everything working perfectly. So now, like I say, when we hit escape, we want this to close because that's an accessibility requirement. And uh, it seems like a perfect use case to show how you can control Pingo interactions with JavaScript. So let's go into our JavaScript file, main.js. And this is, let me show you the documentation first in Pinegrow. So here we have the Pinegrow Interactions API. And what we can do, we can play an animation, we can pause an animation, we can seek to a specific point in the animation, uh, recreate the animation, and so on and so forth. This was a bunch of animation, uh, this was a bunch of um, documentation added for when you need to refresh all the animation, stuff like that. It's a bit advanced for this tutorial. What we're gonna wanna do is simply play the interaction. And we have access to PGIA on the page because that's something that Pinegrow Interactions gives us. And I can prove that by just going like this. And you can see we've got a bunch of stuff here and there's the play function there. And what it takes is an element, the animation name or the index, and then data that you wanna pass that, um, that interaction, which we're not working with data, so we, we don't really care about that right now. So let's go into here and first of all, let's get our button. Um, I have a feeling we should give it an ID just so we can target it. Uh, button, blah, blah, blah. ID of menu button. Let's just update all of our pages with that. Close that so we have more space. First thing we're gonna do is get our menu button. Menu button equals document dot get element by ID. And then just to be sure, let's just go if menu button because it might not be on the page or whatever and we don't want to do all this, whatever. Just a habit I've got myself into. When we Menu uh, button add. So on the click, we're going to run this function. Cool. So we want to PGI play. 
Um, let's make this into, I don't know why I do this, I'm so old school. Because so we can go like that. And we want to play an animation. Actually, no, it's not a click, is it? What am I talking about? Uh, window dot add event listener um, key up. And this is fine to do this. And now we want to check if it's the escape uh, button. So event dot key. There we go. Event dot key dot escape. Perfect. So I'm uh, sorry, copying it. If e dot key equals escape. That's when we want to clo play the close animation. So let's just do this um, thingy and then go menu button. So we're getting the menu button, which has all of the interactions bound to it. And we want to play the close. I can see it just down here. Menu interaction. Now, the other thing this could take is an index. And here's your index here. So that's zero index, and that's one. So we could do close menu, or we could do one, but that looks kind of uh, gross and a bit difficult to understand. So that is all, let me make this bigger, I can't make it bigger. But that is all we should do. We could do an extra check to check that it's open as well, but it really doesn't matter. Um, we're not gonna see anything. Menu button, bot, bottom. Why don't you tell me about that? So I'm pressing escape right now and it's everything's fine. You're not seeing any flashes or anything. So open the menu and I'll hit escape. You can see that that interaction plays just by hitting the escape button. Look, I'll even prove it by recording it with my phone. Perfect. And this is great because what now that we go to the close interaction, we can do anything on this timeline now. We can change the interaction, do whatever we want inside of this interaction. And we know that that escape button is going to trigger that close animation. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you now know how to trigger interactions with JavaScript in PineGrow. But of course, if you are anyone from Webflow and this does look appealing, then please let us have the ability to trigger our interactions with JavaScript because PineGrow does it and they do it very well. So until next time, happy no coding. <laughs>